Rachel here from The Confused Millennial and welcome back to my channel. You're gonna learn the top things that myself and other moms want you to know about the breastfeeding journey. These tips and nuggets of wisdom will give you comfort, guidance, and hopefully peace for reaching whatever your goals are when it comes to feeding your baby. So let's jump into the 13 tips. Tip number one, the first few days you actually don't have breast milk yet. You have colostrum, which is like a thick caramel-like substance that has all the antibodies and uh, nutritional needs for your baby. Your baby will end up cluster feeding that first day, two, three days, week, uh, three weeks like mine did. <laughs> and during that time, your milk will come in. Tip number two, be prepared for it to feel uncomfortable. So this was one I really wanted to deny, pretend that it was never going to happen to me. Um, and unfortunately, it is something that I ended up experiencing. Both when the milk would actually let down was a really interesting experience that was quite uncomfortable. I started panicking before I left the hospital and my milk was coming in because my breast felt very hard and engorged. And I was convinced I already had like mastitis or a black duck or something. Or it can also hurt just when your baby's sucking if they don't have a great latch. Other women have said that it hurts simply because when the baby is sucking, your body's producing oxytocin, which really helps with the contractions while you're delivering the baby. And postpartum, the oxytocin helps to contract your uterus back down to its original size. So some women say they have some discomfort in that area as well. Tip number three is to pack a lot of snacks because you're gonna be ravenous. Like I am talking, there is not enough food in the world world to satisfy you ravenous. I really wanted to go home as soon as I delivered my baby. I was like, please let me out of this hospital, but we were on a 48 hour hold, um, which I'll share more about in my breastfeeding video next week. Long story short, I ended up being really grateful that we had to stay for the full 48 hours because our hospital had really good food and really large portions. And when you are home, make sure you are prepared to have lots of bedside snacks, while you are nursing your baby, because trust me, you are going to need them and preparing for baby in advance. I would also recommend stocking your freezer with a ton of freezer meals because nobody wants to cook that first month with the newborn. Tip number four, get the insurance pump because you're probably gonna need it at some point. Even if your goal is to exclusively breastfeed, pretty much every mom I've ever talked to has had to pump at least one time. So whether you start off having great breastfeeding experience and then all of a sudden your baby refuses to latch, it happened to me around three months she just didn't want to latch for one feeding of the day can't explain it no idea why it happened eventually she started latching again but I had to pump for that feeding for about a month others moms they don't produce enough milk so what some of my friends have ended up doing is they will nurse their baby and then after they nurse their baby they will pump in order to kind of increase their supply and sometimes they'll also supplement with formula maybe you're going away on vacation you'll end up needing to pump there are a million and fifty thousand reasons why you are going to end up needing to pump I'm also going to be doing a follow-up video to this about my breastfeeding essentials but on top of the insurance pump I would include getting what's called a haka and I will link that in the description box as well. It basically just suctions onto your boob and collects the milk that's dropping on the unused side. Tip number five came from you guys on Instagram. Actually, the rest of these tips are a hybrid of mine and the ones that you guys submitted on Instagram is that your baby won't always latch. And that was true for me. That's been true for a handful of my friends as well. When I was in labor and delivery, my daughter was struggling to latch on one side. They kind of shoved her on and bruised me. That's a whole other story I'll share in my personal breastfeeding post though. Again, like I mentioned before, she refused her 7 p.m. feeding for about a month. One of my friends, her daughter, her son just stopped latching altogether. Just because you have a good latch at one point doesn't mean it'll always stay good. And just because your baby isn't latching at some point doesn't mean that they'll never latch. So one of the people that actually wrote into me said that for the first three weeks of her child's life, the baby would not latch and then miraculously got it. So just keep offering. Also on the note of latching, I'm also going to talk because a lot of you guys wrote this in as well. Your babies would only take the breast and they wouldn't latch onto a bottle. So my lactation consultant said introduce a bottle at three weeks in order to ensure this doesn't happen. Some babies you can do that and they're still just not gonna wanna latch onto a bottle. Again, it's the same thing. It's just keep offering until you're able to reach your goals. Tip number six. So you have options and that can be really easy to forget when you go on Instagram and you see all these moms celebrating their breastfeeding victories, 
The reality that you don't see is there are just as many moms that are exclusively pumping. There are just as many moms that are supplementing with formula. And no matter what is happening in your breastfeeding journey, just remember you have options. And at the end of the day, the number one priority is your mental health. I always said when I was struggling to breastfeed my daughter that I never wanted to get to a place where I felt resentful about having to feed my daughter because I didn't want to transfer that energy to her. And I will be 100% honest, if I did not work from home and I was going back to an office, my daughter would have been on formula probably by month two or three. There's no way I could have done it. Because I know I was home all the time, I was willing to make it work for us because pumping does take more time. And so if you are one of those moms that are breastfeeding them pumping or even just exclusively pumping, I tip my hat to you. It is a huge time investment. It is a huge labor of love. It's a huge sacrifice. And there's no right or wrong way. Whatever option is going to keep you healthy, keep you happy, keep you being the best mom showing up for your kid is really what I just want you guys to remember and what the other moms I talk to want you to remember through this journey. Tip number seven. So a lot of things can affect your supply. So whether you have an oversupply or an undersupply, there are a million different factors that go into this. It can be that your baby kept falling asleep at the breast in the early days and they actually weren't cluster feeding to establish your milk supply. If you have a lazy eater, could be like my daughter, she would sleep but she would suckle while she would sleep on my breast so I ended up with a massive oversupply. There's so many different things. It's too little water, too little food, both can decrease your supply. On the flip side, if you're massaging your breasts, taking hot showers, those can actually increase your supply. So there are a ton of different ways that you can be impacted, especially if you are going to be going back on a hormonal birth control at some point. That could drop your supply. Exercise can drop your supply. There's tons of different factors. No matter what ends up happening with your supply, again, there are different options. There's different things that you can do to work with a lactation consultant to see about getting your supply up or down or regulated in whatever way will meet your breastfeeding goals. Tip number eight, breastfeeding is not free. So I remember naively thinking, oh, breastfeeding is going to be great. I'm going to save so much money on bottles. I'll save money on formula. This is fantastic. I won't have to worry about packing all this extra stuff in my diaper bag. But here's the hard truth. Breastfeeding is not free. In fact, it's a huge time investment and there's actually a lot of things to buy and invest in if you choose. So there's nursing bras, nursing tops, nursing dresses. If you get a block duck, there's different massage tools you can get. Maybe you're having to make appointments and pay for a lactation consultant to help you work through any issues. There are, it can be just as big of a money pit, if not a larger money pit, than if you're choosing to feed your baby formula. With that said too though, Breastfeeding is a massive, massive time commitment. I've talked about it before. If you're breastfeeding, then pumping, it's a huge time commitment. If you're just breastfeeding, it's a huge time commitment. Your schedule is much more restricted, not just because of a nap schedule, but because of also a feeding schedule that you are typically physically present for. With that said too, in the early days, my daughter was latched to my breast for 14 hours a day. Yes, you heard that right, 14 hours a day. She was latched on to me. So, Anyone that says, oh, it takes no time, it's quick, it's easy, um, that's not always the case. Today, that's much more the case for me. It probably only takes me about an hour, hour and a half a day now to feed her. Number nine, you need to be prepared to go down some really deep Googling rabbit holes. I can't even tell you how many times during those early middle of the night feedings, I spent hours on Google freaking out, stressing out, raising my anxiety levels over the dumbest stuff. It is... Is she getting enough milk? Is she not getting enough milk? Is her poop color okay? Is her poop color not okay? Is she sleeping? How do I know if she's sleeping enough? And you would start to drive yourself crazy. Tip number 10, not all breast milk is created equal. So in your breastfeeding journey, you're going to have what's called foremilk and hind milk. Foremilk is at the forefront of your breast. It's really light, liquidy. It almost looks like milky water. And then in the, behind the foremilk is your hind milk. That's the really dense, rich, it's the part of the milk that gives it the liquid gold effect, if you will. If your baby's getting too much foremilk, milk it can discolor their poops it can actually get lead to them being fussy all right i am now joined by little miss reagan but on to tip number 11 so there can be a lot of shame involved on all sides of the fence when it comes to breastfeeding whether you are successful at it you can feel shame because others can't if you can't breastfeed you can feel shame because your body's betraying you 
if you're overproducing, you can feel shame because others are underproducing and just, it's a whole, there's no like, everyone's got their own shtick, if you will. So what I always kind of like just say to really remember is that everybody's journey is different. We all sign up for different experiences. You have the choice in shame. You can choose to feel it or you can choose not to. Really, at the end of the day, the only judgment that matters is yours. And if you feel good about what you're doing and your choices and putting your health and well-being first so that you can be the best mom that shows up for your little one, that's really what matters. And I don't care what anyone says on in comments. I don't care what any, whether it's family members, people online, whatever. Other people's judgments is their own personal mm -hmm. stuff that they clearly haven't worked through. And if you are judging yourself, that you're letting go of wherever that's coming from, because it's just, it's not gonna help you. It's not gonna make your breastfeeding journey any easier. It's not gonna make your babies any easier. And we all have our unique struggles that we go through through the motherhood experience. Tip number 12, not all moms have a freezer stash. In fact, I would venture to guess that probably most moms don't have a freezer stash. It can be a lot of work to even just feed your baby from your own breast milk. I think we have this kind of false belief that every woman is just exploding at the rims with their perfect little freezer bags of breast milk and that's simply not the case. So if you aren't building up a freezer stash, don't worry, don't stress. You're not alone. Tip number 13, it does not have to be difficult. At the end of the day, no matter what people say to you, what you read online, what you watch on YouTube, your breastfeeding experience is your choice. Whatever you choose that is in your best interest is okay. And remember to not judge yourself. At the end of the day, if your goal is to breastfeed exclusively and you're having a hard time, just be patient, just stay grounded, you know, meditate on what that's going to look like for you. Try to figure out what the lessons are and your challenges at that time and how you can make meaning from them and use that kind of meaning to be an inspiration in driving you forward rather than um, debilitating you and crushing you. At least that's what I did during the challenging moments. <laughs> figure out whatever you need to do in order to make things less difficult on your end, whether that's asking for help in the kitchen so that you can spend more time trying to nurse, whether that's asking for somebody to step in with a bottle so that you can sleep more. There are so many different options and ways to go about it where this entire experience doesn't have to be some difficult, painful one. And if it is and it's causing you resentment, then it's your option to stop. You're gonna wanna hit the subscribe and notification buttons because in the next video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my personal breastfeeding journey. It's full of laughs, tears, even my husband sucking my teeth, you don't wanna miss it. In the meantime, check out these videos to learn more about what life is like as a new mom.